Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us here again on Bible Tract Echoes. My Bible was open yesterday to Psalm 25, and it's open there again today. If you have the opportunity to stop and open your Bible to Psalm 25, I would be delighted for you to join me in doing that. If you cannot, I'll be reading some of that Psalm today, and we'll be talking about it. We're talking again about those who are called to be teachers, and it should be the goal uh, that all of us are striving for is to be able to communicate and teach others what we know from the Scriptures. As you're getting things ready, get a piece of paper and a pencil ready because I'm going to give today, one way or the other, uh, three ways for you to contact us. Now, you don't need all three, but at least one of them I would like you to take and contact us because I would like to give to you, our ministry would like to give to you, a sample packet of our English tracks. Now, we here at Bible Track Echoes, uh, our main focus of ministry is the printing of good gospel tracts to help God's people share the gospel around the world. We print tracts, have been doing this since 1938, and we do them in different languages, send them literally, as I said, all over the world. And since we do it for free for other people, let me do it for you. Why don't you let me? Now listen, I'm going to give a phone number in a moment. I'm going to give a website address in a moment. And at the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken, our announcer, is going to be giving the mailing address. Please take one of those ways and let us supply you with tracks. Okay? Now listen, if you have your piece of paper and a pencil ready, right now I'm going to give you the telephone number. Uh, the telephone number here for Bible tracks is area code 309-828-6888. Again, the telephone number is area code 309-828-6888. You can also contact us by using our website. The website, the bulk of it is the name of our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated. We have just abbreviated for our website title uh, the, uh, the word incorporated to INC. All right. The website address is www.bibletracksinc.org. One more time, the website address is www.bibletracksinc.org. One of the tracks, by the way, that you receive in that track packet is entitled, Where Are the Dead? Where Are the Dead? A very striking cover on this, a very eye-catching cover. And not only will the cover catch people's attention, but the title, Where Are the Dead, will catch people's attention. And this track will answer that you can know, I can know, people can know where they're going to spend eternity. We can know where... Uh, perhaps a loved one is because of what they have done with Jesus Christ. This is a clear gospel presentation right in this track. Where are the dead? Where are we going to spend eternity? This track will answer that question. Why don't you write to us? Why don't you telephone us, email us something here, and let us give some tracks and give them to you. All right? Okay. Now, Psalm 25. Yesterday, we said that we wanted to approach this psalm uh, from this vantage point. We want to talk to people who are involved in teaching the Word of God. Uh, this is a uh, one time I used this psalm in a teacher's meeting. Uh, there was people there that were involved in both teaching Sunday school and there were people teaching in a Christian day school. And I preached here and I called it the teacher's track. Now, I was not the head of Bible tracks at the time, but I used that term anyway. Maybe I was uh, uh, somewhat of a prophet. I doubt it, but there you go. Now, listen. We're going to come here. Yesterday we said that David's piety shows up here. David's piety shows up here. And uh, I come and just start by saying, and yesterday we described what piety was. And if you did not listen to yesterday's broadcast, you can go to our website and hear, and because we describe at least four key facets that are involved in what a pious person is, or what makes up a pious person. Person. But we ended yesterday's broadcast by saying that David, who is pious, where did his mind wonder when he was uh, in trouble? Because that is a key signal of a pious person. You tell me where your mind wanders in your leisure moments or when your mind wanders when you're in trouble, and I'll tell you about the level of piety in your life. You see, I come and say that for this simple reason. The goal of teaching God's Word is not 
to impart Bible knowledge. We don't want to be a teacher so that our students can score well in some Bible trivia game. Now listen, we need to know Bible facts. That is to be sure. That's where at least basic learning begins. Let's learn the facts. What are the Ten Commandments? What are the books of the Bible? Who is Jesus Christ? Who made the heavens and the earth? Uh, and we can, who was Moses? Who was Abraham? Who was Daniel? Who was Jonah? And so on. Who, who were the 12 apostles? Uh, let's, we need to know these facts. Where did the apostle Paul take his missionary journeys? What is uh, the book of the Revelation about? Uh, what is the end of time uh, going to be like? Uh, th- there's some basic facts, certainly, that we need to know about, and I don't mean to, uh, by my asking, making those statements, to say that's the end of the list. But Bible knowledge in and of itself is not enough. The goal of teaching the Word of God is to see personal piety developed in the life of our students. Now, listen, we need our, for the, those who are involved and in, in under our teaching, we want them to see that their life reflects the, the character trait of piety. Where does their mind go when they are, have their own leisure moments? Are they like David or are they like sometimes the way you and I and our minds go? Dear teacher of the word of God, let's be involved. Let's understand that we're not just teaching Bible facts. We're not just teaching doctrine. We teach those things to a goal, that the people may be like Jesus Christ. Where did Jesus Christ, where did his mind go during his idle moments? Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of time went to prayer to his heavenly Father. Now, how do we accomplish that? How do we get our students under, whether we're a pastor preaching to a congregation, whether I'm an adult teacher, I'm a teen teacher, a junior boy teacher, I'm teaching primary age, I'm teaching the beginners, whatever the age bracket is that I'm teaching, how do we accomplish that our students become pious people? Well, I think we follow God's example as a teacher. How did God teach? Come back to the passage here. Look at some verses here with me in Psalm 25. Notice in verse 4, verse 4 says this, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Two things out of verse 4. Number one, we're going to have to show people the things in the Word of God. There needs to be a what I'm going to call a special showing. The job of a teacher is to help open up the Word of God and show it to your class. We don't just say, now class, learn these facts. We need to show them. We need to draw their attention. We we need to find ways to help them to want to bring their minds to think about the text before us for that day's study. Not only that, we we not only want to draw their interest in to show them, we want them to be not only a special showing, but a special teaching. Verse 4 again says, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. We need not only bring their minds to bear, show them the relevance of the passage, cause them to want to see it, but then we're going to have to walk through and unfold what the passage actually says. And my friend, you as a teacher, that's going to take time on your part and my part. We're going to have to know, well, what does the text say? Why does it say this? What is the point of this passage? Here in this psalm, I know, I think I know what the point is. At the beginning of the psalm and at the end of the psalm, he says, David says, Lord, I don't want to be ashamed. My friend, (laughs) I think that's the point of the psalm. That you and I in trouble, you and I don't want to be ashamed. We don't want the, the, the children, the adults, the teenagers under our uh, teaching uh, time. We don't want them to end up ashamed. We want them to end up vibrant, victorious believers walking with Christ. Amen? Well, listen, that's the goal of this psalm. I, I think many a Christian doesn't want their life to end up ashamed. So when there needs to be a special showing. We need to begin by drawing them in, showing them why they need to have this passage. Then we need to teach them what the passage says. Now come down to verse 8 with me for a moment. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. If you notice in verse 4, the word teach is used. Notice in verse 5, the word teach is used. Those are different words, Hebrew words for teach, that are used in verse uh, chapter uh, verse 8. We'll come down to verse 9, they use the word teach again. That's the same word that's used in verses 4 and 5. You get down to verse 12, the word teach is used. That's the word that's used up in verse 8. My friend... Two different words translated by the same word teach here, but each word emphasizes a little bit different idea and goal for the teacher. You see, verse 8 and verse 12, they emphasize inculcating the, the word, the truth, the teaching into their lives. We need to show how to put it into their lives. Take What does this truth mean? How do we need to put it on? 
How do we need to build it into our life? What's it going to take for us to really grasp this? How do we meditate on this? We need to show people how to do that. But once we do that, then we come to this other word that's used in verse 9. Verse 9 says this, The make will he guide in judgment, and the make will he teach uh, his way. The word used for teaching in verse 4, verse 5, and verse 9 have the idea of showing how the teaching, the, what the text says, how it directs us in how we go, how we live, how, how we interact with people. It's the practical side of the truth. We not only need to teach the truth and how, why we need this in, to be built into our lives, but then we see now if this is built into our lives, then this is what we will act like. This is where it will lead us. This is how it will affect our lives. This is how it will change us. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That is a process as we learn the word of God, as somebody teaches us the word of God, as we learn the word of God, as the spirit of God teaches us. It's inculcated in our lives because we meditate on it. But then God will say, now, here's how we put that into practice. We put it into play. I used to referee basketball and high school basketball. And you know what? Sometimes we had to call time out and they would... Give me the ball, and I would stand up near the scorer's table. And uh, But it was time to play again. The players would come back on the field and uh, on the court, and one person would stand on the sideline near to me, and I'd get ready to hand him the ball. But until the ball, I, until I gave the ball to that player and he tossed it in, the ball was not in play. A lot of teachers are good at holding truth and giving the truth off and say, here, you need to know this. But then they need to say, here's how to put this truth into play. Here's how to make it practical in your life. Come back to verse 5. It says, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day long. Now, how do we accomplish developing piety? Well, here, according to verse 5, there needs to be by hand teaching. He says here, lead me in thy truth. God Almighty wants to lead us. It's the idea here of leading a child. God Almighty wants to direct our steps and lead us along. We sing the song in shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. My dear friend, Psalm 23, he leads his sheep. Amen? My friend, we have a shepherd who will by hand teach us and inculcate this and show us how it's practical. There needs to be a shaping of the will teaching. And that's what this other second word used in verse uh, 8 and verse 12. He not only wants to direct our, uh, show us the direction to go, but he wants to shape our thinking through the teaching. Now, friend, if you are a teacher of the Word of God, wow, what a great responsibility. What an awesome task. You are privileged, but don't be many teachers because there's unique consequences for being a bad teacher, but you can be afraid of that or you can cry out to God and say, God, help me be a good teacher. Help me. I want to develop piety. I want to develop Christ-likeness in my people. I need to show them the text. I need to draw them into the text, show them why it's needed. I need to unravel the text and show the truth that's there, help them know how to adorn it, how to practice in their life. I'm going to show, I need to show how this needs to affect our thinking about the Lord and about life. My friend, if you're a teacher, what an awesome responsibility. Do it for God's glory. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.